Nashville, Tennessee. Home to Nashville hot chicken and country music. And today's special guest on the Remote No Pressure podcast, A.D. Maddox, who shares with us her story about how she didn't find fly fishing, but as a young artist, fly fishing found her. Welcome to the podcast. Let's light the fire. A.D., thank you very much for joining us today. Absolutely. A.D., on your website, I noticed a, a quote, and it's one of the quotes that actually um, inspired me to, to reach out to you, and it was, fly fishing is a spiritual pursuit. Can you tell us a little bit about what that means to you? Well, I think that it feeds the soul, and also you can do it at any age. So, um, and it's also, you know, when you're, like that quote says, when you're out in nature, um, there's there's a real opportunity to um, be alone, observe, be in the moment, and and leave a lot of things, um, pressures and responsibilities of, of other things that go on in one's life. So that's where that quote comes from, and I think there's quite a few people that can relate to that because there's quite a few people that do it to um, feed their souls, um, to give them some joy in life of something that they love to do that kind of fills them up where they're ready to go tackle whatever they have to do. So they take a break from life and they go out and fly fish. And then, you know, there's also those that do it for work, but they also love what they're doing. So there, there's a lot of joy in fly fishing. And also the fact, you know, like I said, you can do it at any age. Mm-hmm. But, um, and you know, you could become one with nature and just enjoy the environment. And, uh, but the real catch on it is, is that I truly believe that fishing really gets I'll speak in, in my viewpoint, it, it really gets me into the moment. Okay. In the present time. Cause you're watching that fly and you're watching, waiting for the take. So it really gets you focused and dialed in. Um, that's what I have to say about that. Well, that, that's great. I think that's a great explanation. So what, what made you decide? I mean, you're, you're a good artist. You've been, you're self-taught. Um, and, your art is great. What what was it that inspired you to focus on on being a fly fishing artist? Well, it it was in the beginning. It was finding something that sold. You know, it's living as uh, making a living being an artist. You have to paint work that sells because the bank account needs to fill up. Mm-hmm. And um, it it where I was living was in uh, Jackson Hole. I think I was there for. 17, 18 years, and uh, the owner of the gallery had suggested, you know, to paint trout because I was doing um, moose and elk and deer and uh, buffalo, and she said, you know, you ought to try trout, and I said, trout? She said, yeah, and so I got some pictures and looked at them, and I actually was uh, painting trout before I was fly fishing. Um specifically fly fishing because I I grew up fishing but not fly fishing and the first piece sold in uh, 20 minutes for I think it was a thousand dollars so at the age of 28 I was uh, thinking in my head boom repeat the successful action (laughs) so I just pretty much uh, never stopped painting trout because of the sales and and then I also um, needed to go out and learn how to fly fish to check out the fish. I need to bring them up out of the water. So that's what led that. And my father taught me how to fly fish on the Yellowstone River. We have a house up in Montana. And uh, and and I liked it. It was really fun. <laughs> so so I then I got all into fly fishing to um, pretty much go out and, and get the shots uh, to, to paint from. And uh, that's how that began. Wow. So it's almost like fly fishing found you. You didn't find fly fishing, huh? Yeah. Fly fishing found me. Absolutely. 
I kind of dove into it and accidentally started this career. And then the next thing I know, I'm in the fishbowl. I'm in it. <laughs> That's great. Yep. Now, you have, you have art um, all over the place. I mean, in magazines, you've done, you've done art with different companies and whatnot. What was your moment where you're like, wow, that was really cool. Oh, well, yeah. Cause I haven't really reached my pinnacle yet. There's mm. so there's so many higher places that I'm reaching right now, but I'll tell you one, one moment that I thought was pretty cool. I had, um, my first, fly fishing show. This is the first or the second one that was in uh, Ketchum in Sun Valley and it was at Sagebrush Gallery. It was my own show. And uh, I went to this store there called Theodore to get me a really high fashion outfit. <laughs> and and my favorite celebrity on the planet is Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, who don't want to meet Arnold? And in walks <laughs> Arnold. And I was like, no way. And this other girl there, we were the only two in the store that were shopping. And and Arnold uh, helped me pick out my outfit for my show. And I was like, you know, I'm cool. You are, kid- <laughs> you are kidding me. He helped you pick it out, huh? No, that, that, was, that was so fun. That was a really fun moment. That was in uh, 2001 mm. before the towers fell. Wow. I believe it was in August. Yeah, but uh, that that was a really cool moment. Um, you know, there 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 have been a lot of great wins that I've had in this career. Uh, great Sporting Journal covers, uh, any magazine cover is a really big deal to me. I I love magazine covers, um, but you know, I don't do I don't do artistic competition because I I don't. I don't like to put myself in a position where somebody's going to evaluate my artwork mm. because who are they to judge my work and rank it with other people? I'm not doing that. So that's the policy that I follow. So for that reason, you know, there's no artistic awards that I have. Thank God. <laughs> I'm actually really grateful for that. Um, you know, I, in, in my world, uh, I think I'm, I'm really great, but also think that I have a a far way to go to become better. And, and, um, you know, I don't get complacent with what I do because there's, um, there's, there's more to learn about oil painting, you know, going into the technique of applying oil. I mean, that is huge right there. I call that the back end of making the art. Uh, my style is what it is. And, you know, the way that I arrive at, you know, the final product is, uh, has changed through the years of, um, and that's where the journey is. But there's also still, you know, being self-taught, there's also a lot of studying that goes in on the back end on technique. How do I paint faster? Uh, am I painting this piece wet into wet, wet oil into wet oil? Am I letting it dry? Am I using dryers? Am I using clove oil to retard the, the drying? I mean, there's a whole technical end as to uh, making the artwork, Jeff. And that area is monstrous to become better and better and faster. Mm. And, uh, that's where my focus is. That's where the challenge is of making the pieces that people don't see because nobody is allowed to watch me paint. No, you don't allow anyone to watch you. No, absolutely not. But, uh, that is, uh, my little sanctuary of create when I've got my iPod on and I'm, um, uh, in an aesthetic mode, um, where I'm in this flow of creating the art and, and a lot of artists can relate to this when they're in the zone, mm-hmm. what they call it, you know? Um, but, uh, that's, you know, I don't do this, this, the back end of it when I'm creating the, the artwork is, is not for the public. That's, that's my time. It's a sacred, and it's a sacred I, moment, right? 
Well, it's, it's, I don't know if you call it the word sacred, but uh, it's, it's where I'm really getting down to business. Mm. This is what I do the best in my life. And it's where my dedication is, where my passion is. I mean, the love of painting is so high. You could definitely put in the bracket of being obsessed. Mm -hmm. And I like it that way because how many people would love and kill for something that they wake up in the morning, they can't wait to go conquer. Mm. I mean, wow. Purpose in life? Check. (laughs) Goals? Check. Mm -hmm. Driven? Check. Obsessed? Mm -hmm. Check. Yeah. That's, that's great. What, what, so high moments back to your question. Ah, there's still more to go. <laughs> I love it. Still more to go. That's a great answer. That is a great answer. Yeah. Now, are you, do you, um, do you evaluate yourself quite a bit? Just good and bad. I mean, some people say, you know, self-evaluation is a negative thing, but even the good parts, is it, is there, do you have a process to do that? Or is it just kind of like, Hey, I had a win today. Well, I don't do self invalidation. Mm-hmm. That's not that's not allowed in my world. Mm-hmm. Every if I were to evaluate myself, I tell you that I'm great. That's awesome. <laughs> Everything I do is wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I mean, I have to have my ethics, and by ethics, I mean I have to do what I feel is right all the time, mm-hmm. which is keeping work ethic in. I'm very scheduled, you know, very disciplined. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's a whole foundation which allows me to operate um, on a high level with my art. And, uh, you know, that's got to be followed. And uh, that's, that's a schedule. I'm not one of those who has to be inspired to create. Hmm. When the clock hits a certain time, I'm painting, and the faucet of creativity is turned on, and it never is at a drip. It's always full blast and there's no shortage of it. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. I think it was Stephen King, um, talked about how he, he schedules his writing uh, every morning, um, very disciplined scheduled muse. You know, this is, this is the time I I write in the morning and the afternoons are for naps and Red Sox games, you know, (laughs) but he has that discipline every day. And if you look at a lot of great artists and writers, they were the exact same way. Consistency, you know, a lot of artists think, well, I'm not inspired today, so I'm not going to paint or write. But really, it's not a, a lot of times you're in the middle of your scheduled time and then inspiration comes, you know. But if you're not doing the work, then uh, you're not inspired. Yeah, yeah. I find there's a there's common denominators to look for in really successful people. And, and I have those common denominators that I see, um, I've observed in other people that are very successful and schedule definitely is one of them. Mm. It's a big one because it, it's not like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to do anything all day today. And then, oh, at one o'clock and no, how about 11 PM? I'm going to decide I want to go paint. And then I, I just drank a Starbucks and, uh, I'm going to paint all night long. And then, well, the next day goes out because you're tired. So, mm. so that doesn't work unless you're one of those artists who just paints on a on a night shift, which I'm sure there's those that do. Mm. But um, there's also business lines that have to be maintained in the day, and that's in the working world. So, schedule of operation is, um, you know, go to bed with the rest of the world at night, and get up in the morning and go tackle the day. Eh? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. But I, I find this normal schedule works for me and I close it down at night and uh, 830, you know, nine o'clock, 930 sometimes and chill out and go to bed like everybody else, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you do you fly fish? Because you're in Nashville, Tennessee now, correct? Yes. Yes, I'm in Nashville. I'm, I'm not able to hop out the door and go past the line um, <laughs> where I want to like mm-hmm. it used to be. It used to be a little bit easier, but. Now I have to uh, make my trips to go fish. And, you know, as the way it was in the beginning, I paint more than I fish. Um, 
by, you know, it's, it's a high percentage. I'm on the easel, mm. but, um, but this year I'm going to be headed out West to go fishing quite a bit. I'm going to hit Utah, Colorado, uh, Wyoming and Montana. And, um, and it's solely for research. I have to shoot a lot of photographs, um, to get data for my new works. Mm. Um, so that's how that's how I used to do it when I lived in Jackson as well. You know, I'd take off and go fishing, but it was easier to fish around Jackson. Sure. And then with the house up in Montana, you know, I could just go up to Montana and and hit the Yellowstone. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit more difficult. There's the Caney Fort that's here, but it's it's about an an hour away from here. I fished there a couple of times, and um, and I haven't fish the elk yet that's one i'll probably do Mm. but i like going out west and especially you know we got that house in montana so um it's convenient nice do you is trout is trout your favorite species to go after or yeah it is because that's what i paint (laughs) (laughs) yeah what's your most memorable experience fly fishing do you have one that comes to mind quickly or? Well, I, I did fish, um, a long time ago. I went to New Zealand and it was, uh, five weeks by myself. And I had these guides set up on the South Island in different places. And, uh, it was a real adventure, um, hiking and God, it was just, the fish were so big and the hunt for them was, was quite something uh to experience um god the fish are big jesus now I, i've heard that in you know, argentina holds some big ones as well as well as kamchaka and um but the south island um at that time it was a long time ago i went to new zealand now this is 2001 i believe is when i went that mm. was 16 years ago um but that's the most memorable one for me uh Yeah, it just, oh my God, the rivers were, the the crystal is clear blue. I mean, the, the Capels uh, near Queenstown, I mean, some of these rivers are just, wow, never seen anything so beautiful ever. Um, and I definitely want to go back. The only way I'm going to go back is to book my ticket and go. <laughs> so, um yeah, that was a realization. Well, you want to go back? We'll just book the ticket. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, life has a way of getting really busy. I found if you ever really want to go do something, you just book the ticket and you're going. There's so. al- there's always an excuse or something else to do, you know. Um. <laughs> well, it's just this responsibility of having to always be in production and, you know, these these trips, like going out and fishing, I mean, they, they've got to be scheduled. They got to be, if you're flying, it really it is. If you buy the ticket, you're going. So, yeah. you know, have you ever done that? Purchase a ticket online. Went, oh my God, I'm going to New York. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I'm going, I'm going somewhere. Well, there you go. Right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going now. There's no, there's no turning back. Yeah, exactly. It's a non-refundable ticket. I'm going, or I just pissed away a lot of money. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm going to be doing, um, one big trip a year is what I'm going to do. The rest of the time I'm painting. That's what I do. I'm on the easel and, uh, and I, I keep up, um, social media. I post daily. Mm. Um, so I'm always sharing my work with people on those platforms, which is really fun. It gives me the social interaction with other people while I'm alone in, in the studio. Um, and then I've got, uh, I've got a show this summer at the Omore College of Design in, uh, Franklin, which is, uh, outside of Nashville. That's going to be in July. Mm. And, uh, and I've got, uh, I've got some exciting things that are coming up. I'm working on getting, uh, 
a book written, a coffee table book written. And that's going to be a little ways out because uh, books are a pretty big project. Um, and then I've got a lot of product coming out. So I can't tell you exactly what just yet because it's going to be a surprise when it comes. <laughs> well, please let us know but it's, when it does come yeah, out. It's, yeah, it, it'll, be, it'll be on my website and um, social media. But there's there's a lot of product that people want that I don't offer, and um, I'm going to be putting my artwork on probably everything you can possibly imagine. Mm. Um, but everything's in the designing phase through another company, so I'm not able to tell you exactly what it is just yet. Well, that's that sounds exciting. That sounds exciting, yeah. and it wasn't you're not the kind of person that just kind of paints and sits around, but you you keep going, you keep moving every day a little bit and uh, you've built quite a career for yourself. If people wanted to find out more about you, um, what's your website address and social media? Can How, how would they find you, A.D.? All right, com. Well, thank you, A.D., and thank you for listening to the Remote No Pressure Podcast. Our guest next week, Luis Da Silva, tells us all about growing up in Brazil and how he had a choice to make. He could either play soccer or he could go fishing. Luis chose the latter. Until next time, thanks for listening to the Remote No Pressure Podcast.